Hello, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are doing a little casual Friday reads for you today. Uh, don't mind me as I use my luggage as the backrest here. We don't really have a chair in the library, which is sad because you need a comfy chair to read in, right? But I mainly read on the couch or in bed, so it's like, well, I don't know. And plus the library isn't exactly the biggest room in the house. We'll just have to stick with the desk. Uh, but I wanted to do a brief little catch-up video, talk about some follow-up stuff about the video that I made about chronic illness, and also just tell you what I'm reading. So actually, let's just start with that. Um, what am I currently reading? Well, the fiction book I'm reading is The Old Drift by Nomale Serpal, out from Hogarth. And this is a tome, but it's amazing. And this is by, you know, an, a Zambian author. I've never read a book by a Zambian author before, and I'm just getting into it. It's so long, there's a lot of like setup, so just working through that, but Autumn is tearing through this book and just is obsessively gushing over it. Pretty much as much as I am gushing over Women Talking by Miriam Taves, Autumn is equally gushing about this book. So um, I'm saying, yes, yes, I know Autumn, I need to read this book, I'm trying to read this book, and then she's like, yes, Kendra, same thing. That's pretty much how our relationship goes. Us gushing about books and making the other one read them. <laughs> Uh, the other book I'm reading is a nonfiction book, and it's an essay collection uh, called Appalachian Reckoning, a uh, region response to Hillbilly Elegy, edited by Anthony Harkins and Meredith McCarroll, who both teach Appalachian studies, I believe, or they're writing, they've written on the topic at minimum. Um, Elizabeth Catt has an essay in this book, and so I've been reading this slowly but surely. Um, since my migraine is now a year old, which we'll talk about in a second, um, I am trying to be very careful uh, of reading and different things so that I don't make it worse or bring it back or whatever uh, and so I'm just reading essays as I can but when I'm reading I annotate a lot like if I did not have migraines I would be reading print and making all sorts of annotations when I read because that helps me when I read to make notes and to use flags but if I don't have the headspace or I'm just reading for fun uh, like a you know like a YA novel or something that you know does not have the depth to have notes, uh, then I, uh, you know, don't annotate, which is sad. I miss, I miss it, I will say. And like my favorite books, like I'm trying to annotate My Brilliant Friend, but I was in the middle of rereading it to annotate it when my migraine started. So actually the day I'm recording this um, has been a year since my big migraine started. So if you don't know, um, I'll link some videos down below. Actually, I think I've made them into a playlist at this point, um, but I have chronic deal headaches and migraines, so it's very common for me to have migraines for long periods of time, like three to four months, but this one has lasted for about a year. Now, I will say that I've it's gotten a lot better in the last couple months. As of probably like February, I was able to read a book from cover to cover by doing different things like heating my neck and icing it and, and all this different stuff, but without sitting on heat, um, or something like that on my neck, this migraine still is, is pretty vicious. I will say I appreciate that it's no longer in my language centers and the brain fog from the migraine is a lot better. So I am very happy to see progress. And you know, my doctor said, you know, it's, it appears, you know, your, your brain's just gonna have to take time to recover. I don't know why your weird migraine just went this way. Like, we just don't know, but just take time and let your body recover. So here we are a year later. I remember the last book I read in print before my migraine started was West by Karis Davies. And then I read What You're Getting Wrong About Appalachia over the course of like a few months because I only could read a few pages at a time. And then I called it quits because I was like, I can't like keep doing this to my head. And then I read The Long Live the Tribe of Fatherless Girls by T. Kira Madden, which was a great, fabulous book to read cover to cover in one sitting. Uh, and then I've been working on Appalachian Reckoning. Those are the only books that I have read in print this past you know year and, and for context so i would say on average on an average year where my head is average headache i can read about 205 books 200 205 books somewhere in there and then about 75 of those are print and then usually about 125 are um audio it's very frustrating you know as someone who wants to be able to read more uh, I'm, you know, as a kid, I wasn't able to read as much as I wanted, ever. I, I've never had that ability to just sit down and literally read as much as I could possibly read because my head would always give out after, you know, maybe on a good day after a couple hours. So 
I would really I would love that that would be great um, but that's not really the way things are set up so I listen to audiobooks which is why audiobooks are very very important to me and why I think that we need to talk about more about audiobooks and why this whole idea that audiobooks don't count is pure ableist crap anyway I could go down that rabbit trail <sighs> but I will spare you so upcoming reading I am very excited. I have two things that I am working on in particular. I am working on a video about books about food, which I know you guys mentioned that you would love for me to do since I said that in passing. And so I picked up several different food memoirs. I'm actually listening to Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. And I feel like if you're going to talk about kitchen memoirs, you have to talk about My Life in France, which I've already read, and Kitchen Confidential, which is like the antithesis. <laughs> Julia Child, Anthony Bourdain, rock star versus loving grandmother. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I am reading those. I also have uh, several other books on my list, um, including A Woman's Place, where that illustrated book about food, uh, a book called, I think it's like Remember the Plums, which is a food memoir about the last editor of Gourmet Magazine, and then also um, Notes from a Black Chef, I think is what it's called. And I, I held that recently, so I'm waiting for the audiobooks to come in for those, but I'm so excited for those. I also love Michael Pollan, but those are more like nonfiction food books, which I think I'll also make a video on. So memoirs versus just nonfiction food writing. Um, I love food writing, and so I'll probably include that uh, anthology of food writing. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that, but I'm very much looking forward to it. The other thing I'm working on is our theme for the, Indi the partition of India happening in July. So our one of our contributors are reading woman, if you didn't know, she's a woman from Saudi Arabia, but she's of Indian heritage and she actually has family that was split up during the partition of India. So she's a very, you know, personally invested in this. So if you want to go check out Samaya's stuff, I will link uh, all the things down below. Uh, but we are working on uh, a theme on the partition of India. And at first I was like, where on earth am I going to find books about the partition of India? I have no idea where to start. And she's like, oh, Kendra, I've got a list here and it's like a dozen titles and I was like okay thank you so I basically picked out ones that had audio versions and let me show you ones I found so I haven't hauled these yet but first up is a Newbery honor book and that is the night diary and this is a middle reader uh, novel set in like a diary format and it's about a young girl during the partition of India so basically it's like dear America just for a girl during the partition of India Yes, you know I, I'm obsessed with Dear America. I'm still collecting them, and I am in my late 20s. Um, and then the other one is Joe Burrell's sort of story collection, um, the Un An Unrestored Woman, which is a short story collection about the time period and during the partition of India, about women, obviously. And then I also have had this book on my backlist TBR, Girls Burn Brighter, which is her debut novel. You know, this is her story collection, debut novel, and this is not about the partition of India, but I'm going to probably read it anyway. Um, I also have a book about the Kashmiri conflict called A Far Field. The author's last name is Vijay. I can't remember the first name, um, but it's downstairs, and I also plan on reading that for the theme. And then Samaya will also have some books she's recommending. Another contributor, I'm going to be doing a theme about chronic illness, and we're going to be covering mental health and chronic illness. I know that mental health is a chronic illness, but just to differentiate between the different struggles and how you can also have both and that, how that looks differently. So I'm gonna be handling like the physical chronic illness and I think Sachi is taking mental health. So after doing the video that I did, one of the books I definitely wanted to feature was uh, Ask Me About My Uterus by Abby Norman, which I just ended up buying after I made the video. So I was like, this is stupid. I should just buy it and then make notes and read it and, and talk about it on the podcast when that theme comes up. So that is what we are doing. The paperback of this is out already, and I'm very excited. Um, this is Abby Norman. Um, she has endometriosis, and it's been um, a really difficulty for her, but she also looks at, like, women's pain and how women have been ignored, and, like, a lot of people don't know that end what endometriosis is, and it's also lot of your uterus growing on other things around your uterus that aren't your uterus, and that is bad. Yeah, so that's where we're at right now. I thank you all for all the wonderful comments on my past video and I really appreciate how all of you were so kind in, you know, 
commiserating with me if you also have a chronic disease but also those of you who are able-bodied saying you know I just had no idea that this was a thing and thank you for sharing your story I just really appreciate that because it is a lot to share someone's story emotionally it's a lot and you know I rarely talk about it and a lot of uh, the people that I know back home had no idea that I had all of the stuff and now they do so hi if you know me in real life how's it going Anyway, I think that's it for me. Um, I'm going to be back uh, with a birthday haul very soon. I'm waiting for a couple books to come in before I film it. But uh, that's going to be my birthday video. So wait for May 1st. You know, go buy yourself a book for my birthday. That's fine too. I'm happy with that. We can all celebrate. It gives you an excuse to buy another book for yourself. You're just like, oh, this is, I'm just buying this to celebrate Kendra's birthday. She said it was fine. I'm your next excuse. All right. I guess that's it for me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.